I'm exploring this new understanding and revelation in scripture that the image of counterfeit Israel, the image of the Antichrist that is counterfeit Israel is actually going to be the next superpower that is going to bring down the United States, will replace the United States, as is described between Revelation 13 and Revelation 17. And so I've been exploring this, trying to understand, first of all, has anyone else, is anyone else talking about this? Is anyone else understanding this from scripture? And what are the indications that this is already beginning to happen? Because I know that this is going to happen next year. I already know that in a year and a few months that this is going to happen. How do I know that? Because I know what I'm doing. I know when I was anointed to do what I'm doing. And I know the number of days, 1260 days, that I will be doing what I'm doing. You don't have to believe me, but believe God. So go to him and ask him if what I'm saying is true. I want you to listen to Netanyahu sort of puff himself up because he knows. I mean, this is his goal is for Israel to be the next superpower. And they will. Counterfeit Israel will be the next superpower as part of this kingdom of the Antichrist. And that image of counterfeit Israel, that image of the Antichrist is the one, as we're told in Revelation 13, that is actually going to be the persecuting power, which is so ironic. It's so mind boggling and brilliantly ironic that God would use the very thing that counterfeit Christianity, that Zionists are worshiping to actually be the persecuting power. Right now they're BFFs, right now they're best friends, right? Just like a minute ago, the United States and Israel were BFFs. But you have to understand the, the the character of Satan. And I've told you this for many years now, that if you want to understand the character of Satan, take a look at what is being called narcissism in the world. Because we have the, cal- the character of the spirit that is occupying us. And so that is a spirit that is occupying a person. And what that spirit does is flatter you, and gain your allegiance and take what it can from you and then it discards, it pulls the rug from under you. And you can see that this is what counterfeit Israel is doing right now. A minute ago, we were best friends. A minute ago, they were so grateful for the $3.3 billion a year that they've been getting from us for since the 1970s. Meanwhile, we can't even afford groceries. But, you know, our tax dollars are going to a genocide in Palestine. I don't understand how that's okay. But my point being that it was all fine and dandy when the United when they needed that from the United States and they were, and he was so grateful and oh I promise you know it's not going to be much longer. And even now, even now he says give me the weapons and I'll finish the job. Here's what I say to you. I mean, you haven't done it yet. What makes, what is, what's supposed to make us think that you're going to keep any of your promises or that you actually have that kind of power of yourself? His own war cabinet is coming out and saying, this man has no strategy. He's not going to defeat Hamas. His strategy is to have a relentless war. And I I 100% believe that. This is demonic. In any event, you're welcome to go and find this uh, this video. It's a whole lot of him puffing himself up, to be honest. It's all Netanyahu on stage talking about Israel becoming the su- the next superpower and how wonderful they are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's on a channel called The Chosen One, and the title is Israel the Next Superpower. Personally, I don't think it's really worth watching the entire thing. It was a lot of just blah, 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 blah from Netanyahu. But there are a couple uh, places here that I want to direct your attention to because I found this to be really blasphemous. What you're going to hear right now is him claiming that Israel brings, he, he makes a reference to Moses bringing water from a rock. And really, it's not Moses who brought the water from the rock. Remember that when Moses quote-unquote, brought the water from the rock, 
that he took credit for it. And that's the reason why he did not get to bring the Israelites into the promised land. He died before then. So God was not pleased with him. It was God who brought water from that rock. And Netanyahu is going to draw that analogy in such a blasphemous way, saying that, oh, remember Moses? Moses brought water from a rock, but Israel brings it out of thin air. What is he saying? Because God's the one who brought water from a rock. And by the way, rocks don't produce water. So yeah, God did bring it out of thin air. But essentially what he's doing is he's one-upping God. This is like no fear of God whatsoever to say something so blasphemous. And what he's talking about is their technology and their blah, blah, blah. And, and I want you to remember something that during that time just before World War II, what were Jews doing? They were prostituting themselves to science. This is not something that any that God's people should be bragging about. Oh, our technology and look at what we've done and look how powerful we are. That is not something that God would look favorably on. First of all, there's no glory to God. It's all about, oh, look how look how wonderful we are. Look how self-efficient we are. We don't need anyone. We don't need God. We don't need we don't even need our BFF anymore. So bye bye. And they're I mean, they are literally turning on the United States, not defending the United States at all, because this is in biblical prophecy that the United States would only be a superpower for a little time, for a short time, and that the United States as the false prophet in Revelation 13 has only two purposes. One is to testify to the Antichrist and the other is to set up the image of the Antichrist. That was its purpose. And now that it's done it, it's about to go down. And nothing's going to stop that. It will happen in a little over a year. I just wanted to see, is is this Israel, like, are, are they even voicing this agenda? And, they, and he most certainly is voicing this agenda. We are. We are. I just heard about an African woman in Africa has to walk eight hours a day to give water to her children. Four hours one way to a well, four hours back. And a young Israeli company brought in this technology that improves on Moses. Remember Moses? He brought water from Iraq. Improves on Moses. They bring water from thin air. They bring water to Africa, to millions of people in Africa. Israeli technology. And I was just recently in India. That's my friend. Okay, did you hear that? Improves on Moses. And really, okay, first of all, Moses is so important in the Bible. He's so important that the people of Israel, Jesus even said like that you that that Moses is the one on whom your hopes are set. Moses brought the law. Moses represented the deliverance that Jesus is going to bring to his people who are Israel, not a nation in the Middle East. So what he's claiming here is ultimately that they have improved upon, they have improved on God. That's what he's claiming. And even if he wasn't claiming that, it would still be blasphemous. You're better than a prophet of God because of your technology. Give me a break. And you hear everyone in the audience clapping. Yes, yes. Oh, good. You know, you really... Knocked that one out of the park. You really one up to Moses right there. Anytime that someone is saying something like that about God's prophets, they are ultimately talking about God because God is the one doing his works through his prophets. That This is insane. It is insanely blasphemous. The word says that the Antichrist is going to say unheard of things about the God of gods. Listen, guys, wake up, listen. Now, I want to remind you about what these people are doing, by the way. The IDF soldiers, I don't know if you know this, but the IDF soldiers are actually giving, they're, they're setting it up so that Israeli families are coming in, is, Israelis with their children, it's such a disgusting sight, with their little children in strollers, they set up camp to block aid, humanitarian aid from going to Gaza. And the soldiers, you know, kind of make them comfortable, set things up for them and actually commission them to come there to block humanitarian aid from going to Gaza. 
This is what they do in the name of God. They block food from going to little children so that they're starving to death while they bring their children and they make a party of it. It is so incredibly disgusting. They have completely isolated and alienated them. And in the word, it says that this image of the Antichrist is going to prevent those who do not have the mark of the beast from buying or selling. It's going to isolate and alienate them. Now, let me show you how else they're going to do that, because this is in the mentality of this image of the Antichrist, because you can hear it coming out of his mouth and you can see it coming out of his deeds. And not just he, Netanyahu, but this is the mentality of this system, of this kingdom, because this is their behavior. This is what they're doing at the border, blocking humanitarian aid from reaching these people who are starving, who cannot buy or sell, who are alienated and isolated. So if you're wondering what it's gonna look like, take a look, open your eyes and see what's going on. The numbers, you remember people talked about Israel's isolation? Remember that? Israel's isolation? Pretty soon, the countries that don't have relations with us, they're gonna be isolated. Okay, the countries that don't have relations with us, a.k.a. those who do not bow down to us. Now, remember that we are a nation. We are a nation set apart to God. We will not bow down to this. So we will not do relations with them. Listen. Listen to what he's saying. Pretty soon, those who do not do relations with us will be isolated. That's true. You need to listen to what he's saying. You need to listen to the heart by which he is capable of saying that. Where is that coming from? Because that's exactly what the Antichrist and more specifically the image of the Antichrist is going to do. It's actually really interesting because Islam has a similar understanding. Now, now they don't have the truth because they don't uh, regard Jesus as the son of God. And they say things like, Jesus wasn't crucified. Yes, Jesus was crucified. But listen, they do acknowledge Jesus as a prophet. And I will say this, that the Samaritans, remember that, that Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well, that you worship what you, what you don't know. We worship what we do know, and salvation is coming through the Jews, um, meaning that salvation was coming through him, not through the Jewish population. So the way that I see this group is they are people that do not know what they worship, but there are some things that they are also saying they do believe that an antichrist is coming. They do believe that Jesus is coming and that he will destroy that antichrist. They are also waiting for Jesus. They just don't know him because they don't know that he is the son of God. They don't know that he was crucified for our sins. And, but I will say this, they're closer to being saved. Quite possibly in the second resurrection, they're closer to being saved. And by the way, if you've never heard of the second resurrection, hello guys, the first resurrection is referred to as the first resurrection. If there's a first, there's gotta be a second. And as it is, we know that there's a second because uh, the rest of the dead come to life after the, after the thousand years and Satan is unbound and they are given an opportunity to come to Christ correctly. So don't act like just because these people don't understand, they won't be given a chance. They're being martyred right now. They just might be given a chance. It, it is actually better that, that certain people die right now than after the witnesses die and that fifth trumpet is blown because after that, no one is going to come in. We know that from Revelation 9. So I think that it's, it's pretty interesting that there are some similarities in what they understand about the Antichrist, about Jesus defeating the Antichrist, which by the way, the Antichrist is the spirit of Satan, we know that. Many Antichrists have come, which are his children in whom he resides, and the kingdom of the Antichrist of the end is the kingdom of Satan. It is those he's using as his tools. So they call what I think we would we would dis you know, we would label it as the Antichrist. They call it Dajjal, and so they say that after the rise of that superpower, 
Dajjal will appear in physical form and be killed by Prophet Isa, which is Jesus. I just think that that's pretty interesting. It's very similar. But now let me tell you what the actual Bible says. What the Bible says is that there is, that the Antichrist is a kingdom, not a human being, a kingdom of many human beings, and that counterfeit Christianity is worshiping this image of the Antichrist that they have set up along with the false prophet of the United States. And in fact, the United States created this Frankenstein of so-called Israel along with Europe. And this is what they call God's chosen people. Well, God's chosen people are Israel, but the word defines Israel as being those who are circumcised in heart, do the things Abraham did, is re not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. So the word does not define it as an ethnic group, nor does the word define a Jew as one who is an ethnic Jew or one who is circumcised physically, but actually one who is circumcised in heart. The word also tells us in, in Revelation 2 and 3 that there are Jews, there are those who claim to be Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan. And in Revelation 3, Jesus says, I'm going to make those who claim to be Jews, though they are not, because they're not circumcised in heart, not because they're not descended, because descent means nothing. Even, even uh, John the Baptist said that to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Don't say that, don't, you know, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Because they had come to where John was preaching. And he said, don't, don't tell me that you, that you have Abraham as your father, because out of stones, God can make children for Abraham. And he did. After Jesus was crucified, salvation was extended to every other nation, to all nations, to Gentiles, as well as Jews. There's no favoritism. God's chosen people are defined as those who do the will of God. Even before Jesus was crucified, he was telling those who were by physical descent, who were saying, we're Abraham's children. He was telling them, you're only Abraham's children if you do what Abraham did. He was telling them, why is my language unclear to you? It's because you're children of the devil. So he did not acknowledge them as being children of Abraham, Israel, Jews, or of God. All right? So he was already identifying them as being of the Antichrist, that spirit of Satan. So in Revelation 3, what he says is, I'm going to make those who claim to be Jews, though they are not, bow down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Why is he going to do that? Because they have been claiming that he loves them, that they are the chosen people. So they're now going to have to bow down and, and eat crow and acknowledge that they're not the chosen people and that God has loved these people whom they martyred. I hope you're hearing this, and I hope that if you're wondering about it, like it, okay, it sounds like the truth, but I, you got to go to God, guys. You need to go to God, and you need to ask him, is this true or not? Help me to know what the truth is, and then you need to lean into him. Don't just do it. I mean, if you do it, you know, like kind of side-eyed, like, okay, well, let me know, God, and you don't lean into anything, and you don't study these things for yourself, don't expect him to respond to you, okay? God does not respond to lazy. He wants all of you, and he deserves all of you, and he requires all of you. So this is very interesting. You know, this is a, a so-called best friend that is really envious of the best friend, who is the global superpower, and resents that best friend, even calling them, and I saw this on videos, Israelis referring to the United States as Israel's sugar daddy, and that they have to wait for their sugar daddy to tell them what to do. And they were saying it bitterly. They were resentful. They're not grateful for what's been given to them every year since the 1970s, the $3.3 billion dollars while we are over here, have a homeless population that, that fought for this country, right? I mean, it's just ridiculous. They're not even grateful. They don't have any loyalty. You see what's happening right now. Netanyahu is turning on America and telling on them. To who? Who is he telling on them to, guys? I can tell you right now. Counterfeit Christianity and Europe. Israel's supporters in Europe. And you know how I know that? Because the Antichrist is wearing 10 horns. 
And those are the 10 Germanic tribes that bore out of the fourth kingdom in Daniel 7, bore out of the fourth kingdom of pagan Rome. These are the 10 Germanic tribes that, that were trampling Rome, by the way, tormenting them, and they became Western Europe. And these, almost all of those kingdoms are supporters of Israel, and the other ones will come along, and they will come along probably in coercion. And they have one purpose, as we're told in, in uh, Revelation 17, and their purpose is to give their power and authority to the Antichrist, to the beast. And if they're giving it to the beast, then certainly they're giving it to the image of the beast as well, because that is part of the beast. That is the face of the beast. Please discern the things I'm saying. This is a matter of life and death. I don't mean to be, you know, sensationalizing any of this. I, I won't even waste my breath. There's nothing I even get from this. It's not like I need to put out so many videos in order to be monetized. I'll never be monetized. I get literally nothing out of this. This is what my life is devoted to, is speaking to you about what God speaks to me. There is no secondary gain here. This is about my duty at the end of the day to provide information to you so that you can make a decision as to whether you want to be saved. Now go ask God if what I'm saying is true.